Ever since the release of Overwatch 2 and the move to a 5v5 meta setup, everything has changed for every single role, right? So that being DPS, tank, and support, every single role, every single hero on the battlefield has a lot more significance now and a mistake can definitely lead to failure pretty quickly. So in today's video, I'm going to be going into every single role in Overwatch 2 and I'm going to be giving you guys three helpful tips to help you guys out. That way, instead of doing one tip for every hero, it's a lot more helpful for everyone and the general public. Just because it doesn't really matter what hero you play, all these tips, right? All nine of these tips are going to be helpful to pretty much anyone watching this video. As always, before we continue on this video, if you guys haven't done so already, make sure you guys do smash that subscribe button. I have been uploading daily Overwatch 2 guides for you guys, ranging from hero counters to new meta tanks and supports and a lot of more helpful guides for you guys, as well as positioning guides. So definitely do check out my previous videos and let's continue on with the video. All right, we're going to be starting off with the one and only the most important role, in my opinion. You guys are probably not going to guess this one. It is going to be support, right? Support is very, very crucial and I have a whole guide dedicated to this this a whole 24 minute video based on this so definitely do check that one out because i think it has a lot of helpful information but for this video we're going to be focusing on very simple three tips for you guys the first one being improving your game sense right now a lot of these tips can go across the game board here in terms of all the different roles but i think for support especially game sense is very important what that means is make sure you're wearing a proper headset make sure you can hear if enemies are approaching you because if you go down as a support your whole team goes down right it is very, very rare where a team actually survives a team fight when the support is the first role to fall down, right? So you definitely want to improve your game sense. Make sure that you are aware of your teammates' health. And I know this sounds very cliche and very obvious, but a lot of people overlook this and they just tend to heal the tank and the DPS is pretty much getting destroyed in the back and they're not paying attention. So definitely do improve your game sense. Make sure that you're aware of what's going on around you at all the situations. And this does seem like a very broad tip, but a lot of people do overlook it once again. Next, make sure that you are focusing the heals also on your fellow support, right? A lot of supports also don't tend to heal their supports. And they think just because they're a support, they're gonna get that overtime heal, which they do as a support, obviously. But sometimes they do need that extra heal. Definitely make sure that you are helping out your fellow support and healing them because that's an extra hand to help you out in the battlefield there. And last but not least here for support, make sure you're watching your cooldowns. I cannot stress this point enough, right? Once again, this can apply to everyone, but as a support, this is so important and a lot of people miss their cooldowns, right? If you're an Ana and you throw that grenade, you have over 13 seconds until it comes back. So definitely watch your cooldowns because as a support, cooldowns means the world. And you can actually go in team comms and tell your team to hold off the push until you have your cooldowns ready, right? Because the support cooldowns, as you guys know, across the board are so important compared to DPS and tank. Next up, we're going to be going over the tank role, right? Now, when it comes to tank, you need to understand that because there's only one of you in the fight, you have to be very careful with every move you make. And this is largely due to the fact that we have moved to a 5v5 setup and you're the only one there. So once you go down as a tank, that protection is no longer available for your DPS and support. And that's something not a lot of tanks understand. And only top tier tanks get this down pretty well. So the first tip here for tanks is that know your healer, right? What does this mean, right? You might think this doesn't really make much sense. What do you mean know my healer? Do I get their digits? Do I call them up? Do I go with them out for coffee? And no, none of these are true. All you have to understand is who's healing you, right? For example, a Myra healing you versus an Ana healing you is not the same thing. For an Ana, you have to be within her line of sights at all time to heal you. Whereas a Myra can easily dash in and give you that healing pretty easily. So that's something you definitely want to have to keep in mind. Next tip here for tank is make sure that you understand that you are not a DPS. What does this mean? This largely applies to Roadhog, Orisa, tanks that can actually deal a lot of damage. And they think that sometimes killing enemy teammates, squishies for example, is a lot more important than protecting their supports or staying on the payload. This is a huge flaw. You need to understand that your role, your primary role as a tank is to provide protection for your team. Right now, I understand killing that enemy that's doing a lot of damage might seem like a better idea, but in reality, you're leaving your support unprotected. And even though you might take that squishy down, you no longer have heals and you might actually die right afterwards. So keep in mind, your primary goal as a tank is to protect your supports and DPS and not provide damage. DPS is actually one shot and you can go in and finish them off. Sure, but don't go in expecting to do a lot of damage. And once again, this does seem like a simple tip for a tank, but a lot of people, especially in low tier rank, do miss this one quite a bit. And last but not least for tank here is don't C9, right? As I just mentioned previously with payloads, 
Tanks are always expected to stay on the payload, stay on the front line, and typically speaking DPS are going to be moving around not on the payload right away, and support can't really be on the payload all the time because they do have to provide that support and heal their teammates, right? So as a tank, you are kind of the primary focus here and the one holding the most responsibility to not C9. C9, if you guys are not familiar with the term, just means getting off the payload and losing that over time, right? That's basically what it means. So in general, make sure that you are not C9ing, make sure that you have your game sense up pretty well and you stay on the payload, especially if it's over time. Next up, we're gonna be moving on to DPS. Now, when it comes to DPS, these are probably gonna be the most important tips throughout this whole video. If there's one thing you wanna take away, take away these three tips because they have definitely helped me out a lot. And in general, DPS role, if you do main it and get pretty good with it, it is my most recommended role to play, especially for new beginners if you want to climb as fast as possible, just because it has the most carry potential. What that means is that if you are very good as a DPS, you can carry your team versus a support, you can't really do much tank, you're kind of 50-50, you can still kind of carry, but DPS is definitely one you want to keep an eye out for. So in terms of your first tip here for DPS is avoid being out of position. Now once again, I did do a whole guide on this one. So definitely do check it out as I go into detail for every single role, not just DPS here, but you do want to pay attention for DPS just because being out of position as DPS, you can get punished pretty hard. And that is usually how most DPS actually die, right? So let's take a very easy scenario here. Your tank is out of position. What they're going to do is probably dive right back and they should be fine. If a DPS is out of position, you won't really get the support from your tank or healer in that case. And you pretty much go down pretty quickly. So you're punished much more faster than the other two roles. So definitely do pay attention to that one. The other one is make sure that you know if you're being countered, right? The reason this applies more to DPS is because certain DPS roles just get countered pretty hard versus others. This might be a controversial one, but I definitely do see it as a counter. For example, Sombra can shut down a lot of DPS pretty heavily out of their alt. She can hack them. For example, let's take a Pharah, right? A Pharah is flying up in the air and you're going up against a very good Sombra that hacks you, drops you to the ground. If you don't have easy protection around you, you're pretty much going down, right? So in my opinion, that would be a very hard counter, especially if that Sombra knows what she's doing, so on and so forth in terms of other heroes. So if you feel like you're being countered, just simply switch heroes. It is just that easy, right? Don't try to outplay them. Don't try to stick to one hero. If you're being countered as DPS, usually the best fix is just switch over. And even if you're not that good with the other hero, at least you're not being countered. So that's definitely a plus. And last but not least for DPS here in this whole guide in general is identify your targets, right? So what does this mean once again? This means make sure you're targeting the proper enemy heroes. For example, if you're a DPS, don't just spray the tanks, right? And I know I mentioned previously in my previous guide that it's good to spray the tanks to build up your ult, but realize that if you're just shooting the tank endlessly and they're getting healed, even though it's only one tank in this meta, you can still waste a lot of time and it's just not going to bring you that much value, right? So as a DPS, realize that your priority targets are enemy DPS, right? That is your number one target. If they are hard to get, then you want to target the healers and supports. And your last option there is the tank. Now, once again, there will be scenarios where the tank will push up forward, be out of position, and by all means, take them out, right? But if the tank is in proper position and you feel like you're just shooting into a sponge that's absorbing damage, you're probably doing it wrong and you need to identify your proper targets. So once again, I could further go into detail for this one, but I think you guys do get the point here. Just make sure that you are identifying the proper targets here as DPS. For tank, that doesn't really apply to you because you pretty much just have to tank. That's the whole role you have there. And for support, you pretty much just have to heal and support. So for DPS, identifying the proper targets to take out first is definitely a very missed topic. All right, and that's pretty much gonna wrap up this guide here. A very quick one, right? Three tips for each role. I hope you guys do take away a lot from these. And if you guys want more guides, do watch my other videos as I talk about positioning, countering a lot more for Overwatch too. As always, if you guys did enjoy this one, be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos. And once again, do let me know below in the comment section if you guys agree with the list that I've made, if you guys wanna add more to it so others can read your comment. And as always, thank you guys so much for all this recent support. Definitely does mean a lot to me. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Have a great one and enjoy Overwatch.